Welcome to Allie's Attic, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is two 24-year-old rappers from Toronto, Ontario. Yay, Canada! Um, they are known as Young Saints. Please welcome Jeffrey and Kadeen. Hi, guys. Hey, what's going on? doing what's going on <laughs> Ooh, deep voice <laughs> so um happy belated canada 150th by the way yes yes that was uh, a few days ago really exciting yeah it was Love my country yeah yeah so do i did you guys perform at all anywhere july 1st no we just relaxed <laughs> enjoyed the fireworks yeah i know i actually i was talking to a guy on the phone and i got to hear the fireworks in toronto <laughs> um oh, wow. mm -hmm. anyways i'm so glad i love having canadian artists on my show obviously because i'm canadian um i had a canadian artist going into the long weekend and now i have a canadian artist coming out of the long weekend and it's so fitting because it was canada's 150th so thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come on my show um, no, no, not anytime. <laughs> now, basically, um, you guys can take turns talking. It's up to you who talks. But I want you to tell me, like, right from the beginning to right now, I know you guys have been friends for years, um, but tell me about your journey. Um, well, yeah, uh, we have been friends for years. I don't, I don't know a time in my life where I didn't know Kadeen. Uh, we, our mothers were, our mothers were pregnant at church at the same time and literally gave, gave birth like a month apart. So we've wow. known each other since then. So I guess before we knew, we knew each other. There's pictures of us at like two years old and stuff walking around in church together. So oh, that is so forever. cool. Oh, right on. <laughs> right on. That is so cool. So when, I mean, I'll ask you first, Jeffrey, when did you start getting interested in music? And I mean, Kadeen, you can jump in anywhere you want. Um, both of you, when, what, what started this? Um, I was actually interested in music. Uh, my mom, uh, she was the choir director. My dad was in the choir and my aunties and stuff played the piano and everything. So I grew up around music. I've always had a thing for it. I was a, I was a band nerd and I was in the choir and all that stuff. So, uh, I, I was always into music. Uh, the genre switched around uh age 11 12 and i, I come from a, a strict christian home so rap wasn't necessarily the music that i was allowed to listen to but i'd always found find a way <laughs> i would listen mm -hmm. to, the, to the radio whenever i could and uh back in the day when you had to like uh record songs on a cassette from the radio press record and then stop it during commercials and keep going like those days Mm -hmm. I had to take my little cassette tapes, and I was, I was always into it. But what got me into rap was um, two two artists, Kanye West and Kirk Franklin. Mm -hmm. And uh, when those two artists, uh, I, I listened to one of one of our Kirk Franklin's albums had rap on it, and uh, I, I was like, "Yo, what is this?" And from that day on, uh, it was it was that. And then uh, Kanye West had made a song called "Jesus Walks," and uh, I was sold. From then I'm like, I want to do this too. And that's how I kind of got into it personally. That is cool. That's a, two great artists. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kadeen, how about you? Uh, mine's a bit different. Uh, the choir that Jeffrey's mom was a director of, my grandma was part of that choir. She sang in that choir. So she didn't really understand rap music, but the rest of my family wasn't as strict. I had parents that were into Christian stuff and then other family members that weren't into it. I have Muslim family members. I have family members that don't believe in, you know, Christ or the church at all. So I had a pretty big blend. So listening to rap wasn't like a big issue for me because I've been doing it my entire life. Uh, Jay-Z, Kanye, J. Cole, Kendrick are all like big inspirations to me. Mainly because they rap and you can understand what they're saying and there's usually always some type of message behind it, even if it's not like directly in your face. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that I actually like because you gotta like go back and listen to it again, and every time you listen to the music, you hear something you didn't hear before the last time. So that's the kind of art that like, tends to like actually gravitate me. Um, yeah, I've been in band as well up until about grade eleven. I started off on the clarinet. How embarrassing is that? So did I. I got into <laughs> the trombone. So <laughs> yeah, I've definitely been around music a big, good portion of my life. 
just kind of stuck with me. And don't worry about the clarinet. That's what I played too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we all did. I honestly think we all did. Um, just so you know, I'm tagging um, Kanye and uh, who did you say? Who did you say, Kent? Kirk Franklin, J. Cole. J. Cole. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. Okay, Jay that was Z. it. Jay Z. Okay, I'm going to be tagging them. I'm not guaranteeing that they're going to listen to this, but I'm tagging them. Now, um, Definitely. Why not? <laughs> why not? Yeah, exactly. Now, your music, your rap music. I mean, first off, when did you guys decide to get together and collaborate? How old were we? Like twelve. <laughs> wow. I mean, we were young, like it we was like, serious back then, though, because like what we were doing is we were just making little raps that just we tell. And on my like, computer, on the computer mic. <laughs> yeah, on the computer mic that is that is how so we just like make little raps, and they're really trash back then, like really trash. But. <laughs> It, we, we didn't really care. Like, it was just, you know, after church, you go, go over to the crib and then, you know, just start rapping. And we were like, yo, like, we need a name. Like, yo, what are we going to call ourselves? Like, God's Troop, Little Soldiers, and a bunch of other <laughs> terrible names. <laughs> terrible, terrible. So eventually names. we had settled on the Young Saints. We're like, all right, we'll go to the Young Saints. And that's what it is. And, and that, it. And that happened. Somebody, uh, you grew up in um, Toronto's East End. And um, you met at church. Well, you were you were both in your mother's stomachs, but yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Now, a friend actually gave you the name Young Saints um, because they commented on your ability to make positive music that sounded amazing. So that is very cool. That's where the name came from. Yeah, yeah. it was actually because um, we came up with all these silly names and uh, pretty much a, a pastor was uh, talking and when he, he just mentioned that, like, we're all saints, and, uh, you know, some are young, some are old, and then we're like, yeah, young saints. And it just means, like, saints wasn't like, you're a saint, which is the misconception of the of the, of the word saint, but uh, we just took that, and we're like, yeah, we're all saints, you know, whether you're sinners or you're just regular people, you know, we just took that, and so we're younger, so <laughs> we're young saints, that was kind of how that happened. I love the name. I absolutely love the name. Now, Thank you. Um, explain to everybody, because you know what bothers me the most? Um, rap is always considered, oh, it's bad, and, you know, people shouldn't listen to it, and they always have awesome, like, or awesome, awful messages. And it bothers me because I think, number one, rappers are incredibly talented because I could not do what you guys do ever. Um, <laughs> to be able to get a message in there and to talk as, or sing as fast as you can, and like it's just, it amazes me. Um, so tell everybody what kind of rappers you are. <laughs> Complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we are, we're, we're just, we're, we're rappers, Canadian rappers, Toronto, Scarborough. East End, <laughs> our music just has a positive message. We never grew up uh, shooting guns and all that kind of stuff. We were never into gangs and all that stuff. So for us to now talk about drugs and stuff uh, from a personal place wouldn't be real. Um, but we know friends that are in that life, and we know friends that do certain things, and we, we just come across people from all walks of life, and so therefore we speak our life experience. Our music is more like life music, positive music, you know? We, we touch on a little bit of everything, whether it's religion, like Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and Kanye do now, or whether we're talking about things that happen to our, to us, like people that we know, family members, uh, and we just like put that that good positive vibe out there. Um, our biggest message was being able to be yourself, just come as you are. You know, uh, we never look down on somebody for who they are or what they believe in, no matter like what religion or anything like that. And our music kind of just touches on being a good person. Yeah, you know, sending positive vibes out there. We're 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 not with the negativity yes, at all. I know. So. That's why I wanted you to say it because I listen to you guys, and yeah, it's all positive. Um, now, um, like you're genuine artists, and you influence a generation through positive music. Now, you yeah. released a series of projects that featured artists such as London's Double S, Revived, and Sarah G, and it put you on stages with Mally Music, The Truth. Uh, Sean Simmons and Rita Marley, just to name a few. And um, you were like 
the first really to influence the come as you are movement which you already touched on Jeffrey and it encouraged yeah. it encourages many young people to strive for the best in every situation regardless of what they've been through or where they are at in their life and I love that message um, you're just you're accepting people how they are and that just it's amazing so thank you yeah. for, thank you thank you thank you for representing Canada like that and and getting those messages out there I think it's amazing no. <laughs> you guys can talk, you know. Anything you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we just don't want to over talk because you get us starting and we won't stop. Um, but um, yeah, no, we, uh, we 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 love that. We also touch on things like love, you know. And sometimes our music is just for fun. Like we'll have songs that are just feel good, feel good tracks. Like we'll talk about about something silly because uh, if you look at our YouTube page or our Instagram or whatever, we like to do a lot of funny skits because we're just we're just fun guys you know like <laughs> so we just uh yeah I'm sorry to touch on that but that was like our main thing from the jump like i didn't want anyone to like box us into anything like we're not just musicians but we're in we're on page right now you're not just going to see music you're going to see a bunch of you're going to see challenges you're going to see funny skits even on our youtube channel as well like it's not just about music but you just have to entertain people we have to have fun we're not just serious people that are going to pull out our Bible lines and we're not trying to be glad start talking about the wonderful grace of God or anything like that, even though there's nothing wrong with that do that. But that's just not us. We're not going to come to you at your doorstep and just constantly talk to you about something that you may not want to hear about right now. Like, we're just us. We are funny guys that happen to grow up in the church and, you know, that's it. And we like to talk to you, you know, be you, be the best version of you, simply because you know, trying to be someone out to get called out real quick. And it's just not genuine. People are not going to feel it and get called out. Yeah. Wow. That was a great message. <laughs> um, and yeah, you guys are funny. I, I obviously I went to your YouTube channel when I have an artist on. I check them out all over the place. And you guys, good. yeah, you guys crack me up. <laughs> Just so, so I encourage everybody to go and check Young Saints out on their YouTube channel because it's it's worth it. And um, I'm glad that you're not putting yourself in a box and saying that you're just this. You're also, you know, you're human. And um, you like having fun and goof around and that, I mean, that's awesome. Your fans love you. Love you. Like when I said that you guys were coming on, oh my goodness, the messages I got were incredible. <laughs> I was like, holy. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are, you, you guys are doing the right thing. Um, now, what is your goal? I mean, like, do you want to be signed? Do you want to stay independent? Where do you want to go from here? Well, Getting signed is always like I know as as a dropper, getting signed is almost like getting as an NBA player getting drafted. That's how you feel. But with the way that uh, the industry is changing, uh, labels, uh, just the internet and the independence of it all, going independent is also a dream. We're not necessarily if the right deal came to us, we wouldn't say no. But as of right now, we are independent and we are doing it independent. We've had offers, but they weren't the right ones. And so we stick to, to what we know so far and what's working for us. And that, um, that's you see, you see it. In, you see the artist like Chance the Rapper, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, for many things. He, he, not only does he dabble in the positive music and, you know, he, he, he has done things with choirs and he talks based on, 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 on TV, but he also has the control to do that because of his independence. As well, right? And I know labels can't stand him because he's doing everything he's doing independently. So that that just goes to show you that if we really strive for it, independence is a, a thing that we can achieve. So yeah, and he yeah. did he did it on SoundCloud too, right? And he won a Grammy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <I agree. laughs> I think. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it just goes to show you, it is great to be signed. Um, but it is great to be independent as well because um, yeah. good things can happen. And it pros all... and cons to both. Yeah. The only thing about being independent that's not great is everything comes from your pocket. Yeah, you pay for everything <laughs> yourself. Yeah, I, st yeah. I tell everybody every time I come on that everybody needs to realize that the majority of independent artists have full time jobs, <laughs> and they're doing yeah. their they're doing their music part time, and they have to buy their own equipment. They have to pay for you know going doing and doing gigs and like all that stuff and um i always encourage everybody to buy 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 the music and support them because yeah it's it's not easy 
Um, now, you want to be known as, like, two guys from Toronto, Canada, which we are going to shout that out as much as possible, um, that made a difference through music with Positive Message, and you're proud to do everything you do um, ground up with the help of your supportive fans that relate to your story, and you do this to inspire a generation. And at this time in the world, we need a lot more people like you. So, like, congratulations for doing that. It's it's amazing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we we also, uh, you know, and, and and of course, you should get on um, you get on the radio, you get on TV, and you say, I I do so much for people, but. But they don't know that I do because I don't want the recognition, but I guess you kind of do because you're saying it. But there's a lot of things that we do uh, uh, that we don't necessarily put on blast. Like we uh, volunteer at homeless shelters and uh, food centers. Uh, we do a lot of music for, uh, we've done a, make music for nursing homes and like girl, boys and girl scouts and uh, things like that because we are about serving our community. And we really want to be as positive as possible. Like it, it, it's one thing to just say I'm an artist and I I speak positivity and I and then never go out into the community and help out in any way. But if you are an artist that speaks that, I think you should be able to to go out and and help. We don't have the millions to just give charity millions and walk away. So we uh, do a lot by going in and speaking to kids, troubled youth. Um, and, and just serving our community, and, and then we're really about that. So, wow, yeah, that is amazing. You were raised right, you guys. <laughs> I think you were so <laughs> raised right. <laughs> um, Kadeen, do you have anything else that you want to say? <laughs> You're so quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe we lost the connection. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Well, at least we. Yeah, I think he lost his connection. Okay. okay. We had him I'll on for a while. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. We got we got to hear him, so it was all good. Um, yeah. Now, if you had anything, okay. So first off, what is your name? Like you, you said it was Jivon. So uh, my first name is Giovanni. Oh, Giovanni. Uh, and then my middle name is Jeffrey. So Jeffrey, the artist, because I always talked about being able to free the artist within myself. So I feel like when I'm in when I'm uh. At my regular job, but I'm working, you know, I'm Giovanni Niles, the government. But uh, when I get to go on stage, I get to free the artist within. And luckily, my name is Jeffrey. So Jeffrey, the artist, is, is where that, that came from. Okay. Cause and uh, with Kadeem, Kadeem Ray, uh, uh, Ray is his dad's name, and it's his middle name. And so uh, he decided to go with Kadeem Ray just so that the identity could, could uh, still be out there. Oh. Well, his relationship with his dad and everything. So, oh well, that's yeah. yeah, right on. Yeah. So then, yeah, he's saying hello, or you know, tipping his hat to his dad in a way. Um, yep. So, if you had any any advice to give any um, new artists out there that are just starting, what would your advice be, Jeffrey? My advice to any artist would be that, and I never would say, don't give up on your dreams and. Uh, make sure that, you know, you put, you put your stuff first. No, but seriously, the only way to make it in this industry is to put as many hours as you put into everything else into your music. If you only put in, do, go, go to the studio once a month and you write songs once every two months and you put on YouTube and they expect to blow, I mean, there's always a chance you could, but most likely you won't. You have to put in, you have to treat this like a job. The only way that you can get good is if you treat this like a nine to five. Then if you have a nine to five, it's really hard, but you have to find a way to, to work a double shift. And that's what I tell everybody. You have to treat your music and your artistry like a double shift. If you go to work from nine to five, then you gotta come home at, at six and work as much as you can to, to, to make that come in. Cause if you don't put in a thousand hours, you're not gonna get a thousand hours worth of anything back. Wow. So that'd be my advice to every single artist. It has to be your second job. The only, only way to make it your first job is to make it your second job. Wow. That is great advice. You're the first artist that ever said that. Just so you know. <laughs> you are the first artist that ever said that. Thank you. That is great advice because it's so true. Uh, um, yeah, it's very, it's very, very true. I find that you usually do the, the cliche, just, just don't follow your dream. I'm, I'm saying it, it, it is your dream. 
So don't don't give up on it. I always follow your dream. Yes. But it's more than just dreaming it. You have to not only believe it and in, in order to achieve it, you have to work as hard as you as you do it. A lot of artists don't put in the work but expect all the royalties from it. Yeah. You know, and it's it's and you, you get around these guys that put out one one song and they think it does well and they haven't done any of the work. They haven't gone to any radio stations. They haven't now we've we've gone literally we've gone to New York and we got dropped off in New York and for I don't know, like fourteen hours with a with a with a, with a backpack each of us a backpack. We went from label to label and we went from radio station to radio station and we knocked, we made those connections. And uh, we had a, we actually had an interview on Vibe, uh, for Vibe magazine at Hot 97 in, in New York. But we said, you know what, besides these radio stations and this magazine, let's just see what else we can push to. And we just walked around, you know. And, and you know, in the States, it's easy. You know, you, you go outside in your neighborhood and you find somebody because that's where, where everything is. But coming from Toronto, Canada, we have to fly out there or take a bus out there, get dropped off in a city we don't know. And just try and make connections and make our way around there. But those are the hours that we put in. Did we miss work? Yes. <laughs> Did we lose money because of it? Yes. Uh, are we tired? Of course. But that's just the work you need to put in to, to get anything out. We would not be where we are or be this far along if we didn't do that. So that's my advice to everybody. Well, and it's great advice. And I want to touch on Canada. Um, you're right. The States... I have so many people following me, and I love them all, don't get me wrong. So yeah. many, like, radio stations and record labels and music producers and, you know, all kinds of people following me. And I have one, one that I can think of right now that is from Canada. I There may be more, so forgive me. Forgive me if I'm getting this wrong. But okay. I don't think people realize how hard artists have to work in Canada to get recognized, to, um, you know, get those gigs, to get concerts, to, you know, stuff like that. It is, the market here is impossible sometimes. Um, It's it's impossible most times. And we didn't even have a voice until Drake blew up, to be honest. And the thing is, there are pioneers that came before Drake. We can, it's like Cardinal Fisher, we we can go in shock clear, we can go off on the amount of artists that came before Drake. Mm-hmm. And they tried, and they tried to push the market and push the limit to get to a certain level, and it didn't work. But luckily, Drake had the right connections, and he 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 went to the states, and he blew up to a point now where Canada has become the hot spot for music. But even with Canada being the hot spot for music, they don't make it in music until they go to the states and get recognized in the states. So you have all these Canadian artists that they've always been there. You know, Drake has just been able to spot to to um like put a spotlight on Canadian artists now. But it, oh, these these Canadian artists are not staying in Canada and blowing up from Canada. They're they're being there's a spotlight on them. American labels are seeing them, scooping them up, taking them to America, and then blowing them up. Now you have people like Tory Lanez out there, and I mean Drake has brought you um like Party Next Door. You have The Weeknd, like Justin Bieber. All these people are all Canadian, all from Toronto. They're actually the ones that are running the music right now, but they couldn't do that if America didn't accept them. And they don't understand that we don't have a bunch of concerts. Like, I mean, look at the amount of people that are in America compared to Canada. What do they have, like, a 100 million to our 10 million or some crazy number yeah, like that? Yeah. Like, it's, it's really hard. It's a hard market out here. For us to blow, we have, it, the recognition from America means so much. And I, I find that Americans don't realize how hard Canadians work to get out there. And that's why I feel that Canadians are running music right now simply because when they go out there, they work twice or three times as hard because they know what they have to go through just to get recognized out there. Yeah, exactly. And it's a a really, really big difference. Yeah, it is. In our our work ethic and everything. And and it's hard. It's kind of sad that, and I, I have so many friends in the U.S. and the U.K. and everywhere, and I love them all. Um, it's just really kind of sad that like the weekend and Justin Bieber and Drake and they had to go and move to the States, not just, you know, (laughs) go there and get their music heard. They actually moved to America to get as much recognition as they're getting right now. And Canada needs to see that Canada needs to start doing that. Like it's crazy. 
Oh yeah. The thing is though is that Canadians when the when the American artists or even those artists come down here, we we pack the sky dome, we pack all the domes that we have because we're so excited to see them. But that support needs to stay here and support our artists as well. We shouldn't have to wait for them to go over there to make it big. We should be able to still have that. They they should be able to go platinum in our city. And I don't mean the Canadian platinum where it's like a, a 500,000 or whatever. Like They should be able to go to a million sold in their own country before they even reach the state. Not usually how it happens to our rare occasion, but and I feel like Americans don't even they don't always under, realize who is Canadian, like Celine Dion and stuff. Like there's there are legends that work really hard to get recognition uh, in in the states, and yeah, we really have to. I love America so much. Mm-hmm. I just wish that they they would recognize how hard we it take, how hard we have to work just to cross that border and make a difference. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like uh, it's, even even in radio, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you have a radio station in the states, and you have a bunch of listeners simply because it's it's, it's in their city. Uh, whereas in Canada, they they don't they rather try and hack to get an American station instead of listening to their own Canadian station. So it's in all markets of entertainment when it comes to the difference between Canada and, 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 and you know, the United States. Yeah. So. Exactly. And yeah, people, when I say to people, oh yeah, Celine's Dion Canadian, or she's Canadian, Shania Twain's Canadian, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, they have no idea. <laughs> William, have no idea. William Shatner's no. Canadian, like, hello. <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, they, had to, they all had to go to the States to get themselves recognized, and it's just sad. I want the Canadian market to blow up. I'm Canadian. Um, I absolutely love when I have Canadian artists on. And to be yes. completely honest, when I first started... I wasn't getting any Canadian artists, and I was searching. I was going. I was going on SoundCloud. I was everywhere trying to get Canadian artists on. I'm finally getting them. Finally, finally, finally. And but late, late than never. Yeah, exactly. And I want to like. I'm going to put a Canadian on like in a second, in a hot second. I'm going to put a Canadian artist on. And um, yeah. I love the fact that we had one coming into Canada's 150th, and we are ending it with you guys. Um, I love your music. I love your messages. I love you. that you aren't afraid to address what is going on in Canada with artists and how hard you guys have to work. Um, nobody yeah. has ever come on my show and said that. So I applaud you because people need to hear that. They need to know. And um, Oh, yeah. Nothing yeah. but the truth. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Need, we need more record execs in Canada and... Labels and we do. yeah, we yeah. do. We need more records. We need labels. We need all that. Like that needs to even um, like the states have like Rock Nation and stuff and Live Nation for shows and stuff. We don't have that out here. We need a Canada needs that Canada has, especially with all the artists that have been servicing and doing well. Like we need to have those things that uh. Canadian artists can don't have to always go across the border to make it, you know? Yeah. People should want to come here. Uh, and so that's why I applaud uh, people like Drake, who have the OVO Fest to bring a tech to Canada, who always rep it and always show that, yo, I'm Canadian, I'm proud of it. This is what my city has. This is why I love this city. And he just, and, and that's why I have to give respect to him because he doesn't, yes, as much as he's like in America now, like crazy, he always mentions he always supports and always puts uh canadians uh first Mm -hmm. and uh the world almost like oh wait they have a rapper rapper from canada you guys are still rap. you guys rap in your canoes how do you guys do that you guys (laughs) rap in your igloos how where's the studio in the ice like you know oh my god i'm glad (laughs) i'm glad that uh he does that, and I have nothing but respect for him and his entire movement uh, when it comes to that. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate that, and I, I hope that more Canadian artists, as they make it, show, shed shed more light so that uh, we can all make it uh, and just take over the market, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you know what, what kills me the most is um, record execs, labels, um, radio stations, they don't realize the market that's out there and the money that can be made from promoting these artists and signing these artists and getting them, oh, yeah. you know, to play all over the place. And there is like, it's a gold mine. It is a gold mine. 
So it is. Whoever's it listening is. from uh, Canada, recognize <laughs> our our accents, our ideas, our lingo, because we have that West Indian, and we have like all these different cultures, European, and like we have all these different cultures, even Native Indian. I have friends, like you know, we have all these different cultures that influence our lingo and the way that we dress and our mindsets. And so when you take put that into music, into radio, into acting, into anything, because we have some of the best actors as well. Yeah. <laughs> so when you put that into uh, into our, our, like you take that and, and we, I mean, we're creative with it, 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 it completely shuts down the market. So if they would just recognize that more, uh, if Canada would recognize that more and build us up and if America would recognize that more and grab us, Hey, we could we, we could we could change the face of entertainment. So. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I mean that's why part of the reason I do this show. Um, I mean I do it for everybody. Um, my artists from the UK, my artists from Australia, my artists from Scotland, the US, my yeah, artists from Canada. Yeah, the UK. We have we have a lot of a lot of people out in the UK. Shout out to them. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> They're amazing. Um, and I mean I love having them on. I love discovering them, and you know the new music and everything. But hands down, Canadians, I am going to promote as much as I possibly can. And that's part of the reason I started this show. So I I hope to God that it does start changing. And I hope to God somebody recognizes what you guys are doing because I think it's amazing. And um, go to their YouTube, you guys. Um, blow them up like Chance the Rapper, but do it Canadian style. They are on SoundCloud. They are on YouTube. Um they're on Twitter. They're on Instagram. You can find them wherever. And um, just Google. Yeah, Google. Google. <laughs> yeah, every Canadian artist, every Canadian artist, not just not just Young Saints. I mean, I'm in love with them because I love their message um, and because they're goof- they're goofy as hell. So that helps, too. <laughs> but um, yeah. um, every every Canadian artist, let's blow it up. And I, I hope I see it in my lifetime. That is my dream. So. I'm so glad that you came on. I am so glad. Um, poor Kadeen, we lost him. <laughs> we lost him, but yeah. oh, he, he's here in spirit. I, I got his back, don't worry. Exactly. You guys, yeah. You, <laughs> you guys practically are like twins because you've known each other forever. Um, exactly, exactly. So, Jeffrey, thank you for coming on. Thank you for spreading that message. Um, it needed to get out, and I'm so glad that you did that. Um, and keep doing what you're doing. Like, wow, you guys are amazing. Um, what two songs are we going to hear from you? Um, we, I know Kadeen wanted to hear Oh God, Mm -hmm. and I wanted you guys to play So Help Me. So those are the two songs that we are going to stick with. Yeah, and those will be up on my website. I'm also going to put your SoundCloud up there. Um, and I'm urging everybody to go to SoundCloud, um, support these guys, promote these guys. If there's any concert organization people that are listening on my show, um, get these guys all over Canada. I mean light up stadiums with them because they deserve to be lit up and um thank you thank you thank you for both of you um for coming on my show thank you say thank you to tori (laughs) and uh, and much love and i wish you the best in everything you do and my door is always open something big happens um canada goes crazy for some unknown reason (laughs) whatever the case may be um just send me a message on twitter and i'm always here most definitely, we we appreciate you having us on your show, and uh, yeah, we are we are ready to come back on the show whenever you want. Just give us a call. Uh, we're, we're we're there. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Thank you so much, and thank you for joining me on Ali's Attic. Keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. Cheers. <laughs>